Well, do y'all know what time it is, everybody? It is beer and bait 30. So uh, I have some Yingling Traditional Lager. It's America's oldest brewery out of Pottsville, Pennsylvania, 1829. Before I discovered uh, Deutsch beer, this was my favorite beer. In fact, my nickname was Ying, um, short for Yingling, of course. And I'm happy to drink this when I can't get the real German stuff. So today, we're gonna do an easy color. This is another popular colors, Red Bug. And uh, it's a really pretty color. It makes a killer trick worm. Uh, we're gonna make a couple other things with it. Um, this is the kicker worm from Angling AI. Those guys over there. Um, this is a really great bait. It's like a dual, it's, it's like a two tail speed worm. Um, I'm gonna make it in my Candy Cane Junior, my seven inch ribbon tail, obviously a trick worm. And then we're going to make a Cinco, a stogie. So, Red bug is really easy. It's just two parts. It's red bug color and green glitter. And you can choose whatever size you want. Some people go all small, uh, the, the, the point, point zero one five. Some people kind of mix more, uh, more, more different sizes. Uh, anyone who watches my channel knows I'm a, I'm a big fan of texture when it comes to glitter. I like to have multiple different sizes of flakes um, whenever it calls for it. So we're gonna do some red bug. First, we're gonna crack a beer, and uh, and then we will get started. This is World's Worst Fishing, Popular Colors, Red Bug. Okay, so red bug, like I said earlier, very, very, very simple, especially if you have red bug color. Now, you can use, um, you can use some, some other red colorants if you don't have red bug. Um, to me, it's a little bit darker than just straight like red or fire engine red. So, oh, well, it's already dropping out here. Um, this this particular red bug is really thick. My normal recipe is 40 drops. Um, I kind of lost count because it kind of went everywhere. So we're gonna do what I think is about 40 drops. And the reason I actually try to measure this out exactly is because it's so thick. Um, so that's probably actually a little bit less, but that's okay. You can always add more. But um, back when I was doing like actual recipe books and really paying attention to how my colors came out, um, it was 40 drops. So you can see it's not a bright, bright, bright red. And that's one thing I like about Red Bug. It's a darker red color. And, uh, and just keep in mind, guys, or guys and gals, sorry, that whenever you're using red colors, most of them bleed really badly. So once I demold these, these baits, if I were to lay them in the same tackle tray as other colors, they're going to be stained red, and it's going to happen quick. Um, a lot of red bleeds. I know MF Manufacturing makes a red color that I have that does not bleed hardly at all. However, most reds do bleed. So just keep that in mind whenever you are uh, making red colors. Like for example, red laminates. Red laminated over another color is really hard to, to, to get right in my opinion, unless you laminate it with a darker color. Because that laminate, it's just gonna stain the other baits in the bag. So if I, let, let's say I have a bag of uh, laminated trick worms one side's red let's say the other side is green pumpkin right well the way that worms are naturally going to move around in a bag the red top is eventually going to come in contact with one of the green bottoms on one of the other worms and you just wind up you know over time you wind up with a bag of red worms um so red's a little tricky maybe some other guys out there know some techniques that can kind of mitigate that. I haven't really figured it out unless you use the MF stuff. Um, but this is my favorite red bug color. I've tried many other variations to make my own and uh, Lure Works just does it right the first time. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pop this in the microwave. Again, this is dead on plastics. No uh, vacuum chamber, no heat stabilizer and uh, that really saves you a lot of time. So. Um, you know, if you can get your hands on some of this stuff or a comparable brand of Plastisol that 
doesn't require as much, much maintenance, go for it. Uh, if not, I do have a video on the vacuum chamber. If you are having bubble problems, um, that will solve all of your bubble worries, 100%, no doubt. Um, gonna go ahead and put this in, one measuring cup plastisol, three minutes in the microwave. Okay, here we go, ta-da. That is cooked all the way through. So now it's time for some flake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you kind of two ways here. Um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shoot the first mold with just the little green because I think that has a really good effect. So we're gonna go ahead and we're really gonna load it up with little green. Alrighty, that's the 0 .015 hexagon flake. And uh, that's pretty much your most common. I mean, most flakes are hexagon flake. You can get the square cut. Um, you have to be a little more careful with the square cuts with temperature because they will fold up. Just, I think, the natural shape of the square. It's, it's a little more prone to problems in the heat. Um, but, you know, for guys running injection machines or anything like that, that's not as much of a problem. But um, we're going to add just a smidge more. And because Red Bug is such a like i said again um because it's a darker color um you have to add a little more flake i think to really make it pop because just the darkness of it can kind of hide some of the glitter okay so that's what we have so we're going to go ahead and we're going to shoot those uh uh trick worms or sorry the uh the, the speed worm type mold the uh the kicker worm so we're going to do that just with the little green and then what we'll do is we'll let those dry up. We'll put the sprue back in the cup here. We'll, we'll get everything remelted. And, uh, and then I'll meet you back here. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? And then we'll add a couple other sizes to give it some texture. And we can all see which one we like better. All right, just real quick. There is the red bug with just the little green. And uh, we'll get a better view of those later. But uh, I have the sprue heating back up in the microwave and then we're gonna go ahead and make the rest of the baits for tonight. And we're back. So, time to add some more green flake, only this time we're gonna add some different sizes. So we're gonna do it basically like we do June Bug. I'm gonna put all three green sizes in here. So there is the medium green. I'm gonna dip out a little more there. Then we're gonna do the big green, which I just absolutely love big flake in, in, uh, in colors, especially when it's combined with other sizes. I don't really ever do it just by itself, but uh, I guess you could, probably in like a big swim bait or something like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, and uh, weeble wobble that glitter in there real quick. There we go. Get it all nice and mixed in. And um, that's kind of what we have. Let me tilt a little bit. Now, I don't know if that helped at all, but we're gonna go ahead and shoot the worm and the trick worm, or uh, we're gonna shoot the ribbon tail worm and then the trick worm. And then we'll take the leftover plastic and we will um, add some salt real quick and, and make some stogies at the very end. Just that way the stogies look uh, authentic because you know the salt does change the clarity of a bait uh, substantially all right looking good there my uh, trick worm mold is a flat uh, it's called a flat worm and uh, I think it was originally from bass tackle I don't know if it's still offered from bass tackle bass tackle used to have uh, a couple owners and then some of them split, there was a brand split or whatever you want to call it. And so some of the Bass Tackle molds that used to be on their website are no longer there. But I'm pretty sure that one originally came from Bass Tackle. And I love the worm, don't really like the mold. It, uh, it draws in a lot and the first cavity, the top cavity, you almost always get a little air pocket in the nose if you don't top it off. I have to usually top it off twice, but that's the price you pay sometimes. Not every mold is perfect. And seldom molds, <laughs> seldomly do you find a perfect mold. So that's just part of the game is learning uh, your molds. Some are gonna be stingy, 
some are going to be no problem. I mean, my uh, my ribbon tail worm molds, those are um, those were bass tackle molds, and they are some of my favorite molds. I don't have to baby them; they work every time. They don't ever dent, and I I only have to top off once. So. Um, some molds are just really simple, some are not. We've kind of discussed that before, but uh, I think these are gonna look good. We're gonna go ahead and let those set up and then we'll make some stogies. Okay, so uh, for the stogies, again, fine salt. Now, Lure Works makes the, uh, well, I don't know if it's the best salt. It's my favorite salt. I like the size of it. Uh, it they sell it pretty cheap and um, I like the way it looks in the bait, so. That's not a lot of plastisol, so we'll do about half a normal amount of salt. I usually do, so this is a quarter of a measuring cup. I normally do a full one of these per measuring cup of plastisol. Um, so that gives me about a 20% ratio, or I don't know, somebody can do the math, but um, that tends to do it pretty well. And uh, you know, I've used other salts. I've used salt from Lure Craft, Bears, I think Bears used to sell salt. Um, too bad he's out of business. I really liked what Bears Baits was doing. Um, so, you know, I've, I've used a handful of salts and um, that's just my personal favorite. Okay. So one thing to remember when you add salt, it's going to cool your plastic quickly. Um, so if you're gonna try to shoot right away, you gotta get on it because uh, that salt you know, I mean, you, you got to think that salt is room temperature, you know, getting dumped into really hot plastic. It, it cools it really quickly. So we're going to go ahead and get this going. And we're going to inject some Cinco's. Okay. Going to hold a little pressure. A little pressure there. There we go. All right. That should be good. And we are all done, guys. We will meet you back here in just a few moments. All right, we got like a little drum set here of molds. <laughs> See if I can do the sweeps here. Yeah, losing my touch, guys. Anyway. I, uh, I don't practice anymore. I, I used to play drums uh, kind of professionally in my early 20s. I went on tour uh, with a country music band and, uh, and we had a blast, but um, I'm losing my chops, guys. What can I say? Okay, so there are the trick arms. Let me try to get some lighting over here. The light's better from this direction. There are some red bug trick worms, and uh, I think it just, I think it's killer in a trick worm. Let's see what else we get. Look who came to see me in the shop, making some baits. Now, I don't think he's too interested, guys. He is sound asleep, but um, I'm not gonna let him near these chemicals. You can rest assured, but he needed to come out here and see what daddy does on film, because uh, he's probably laughing at me sitting here talking to a camera. But uh, hey, buddy. Landon, hello. Hello, all right, he's out. We're gonna show you the rest of the baits. Uh, yes, I am hungry. Oh, here we go. Guys, look at this in the ribbon tail worm. Come on, babe, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you? Do you really? Look at that, guys. Oh, oh, my next fishing trip, I am totally throwing those. Oh, man, red bug is just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous, and I'm a big fan of the multi-size flake. Uh, if we compare that, so here is, um, whoops, here it is over here on the uh, kicker worm with just the small red, uh, golly, the small green flake, and it's kind of lighter as a whole. If you just kind of look at the hue. Um, it's it's lighter because I guess there's less glitter in it as a whole. I don't know. Maybe that green glitter kind of changes the hue a little bit, as glitter is known to do. But um, I much prefer that look to that look. But there, you know, I, I've seen a lot of red bugs that are just like that. So you know, just different strokes for different folks, different ways to do things. 
Um, I'm kind of a fan of more glitter than less. I think more really is more and less really is less when it comes to um, making your colors vivid. But um, I think that's pretty cool. Let's look at the stogies. All right, red bug stoves, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Get those off there, boom. So, um, these, if you'll notice, or well, at least in person, you don't see the green flake as much, and I think that's because of the salt. The salt clouds up the color. It makes it less transparent. You can't see through it as much, so you're actually seeing less glitter. All right, hopefully that's a, a pretty good view. And um, yep, that is Red Bug. That's a couple ways to make it. And uh, like I said, we are keeping it simple today. And uh, Red Bug is, is a really cool color. It's basically June Bug, but instead of purple, it's red. And, uh, and, and I really, really like this color. I used to throw it a lot. Um, one, one of my good fishing buddies, Simple Jack, he used to throw it a lot. And uh, it's, it, it's a really good color. I, I still hear about guys using it all the time. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So definitely check that out. If you, uh, if, if you make your own baits at home, definitely give Red Bug a try. I think you'll like it. I think you'll catch fish on it. I think your buddies will catch fish on it. And uh, it's kind of one of those um, colors that has stood the test of time, which is why it's on popular colors. All right, so one thing I'm going to start doing on my uh, bait videos is I'm going to start um, rigging the baits to kind of show you what, um, sorry, let me get this rod sock off, to kind of show you what they look like rigged in different ways. And, um, and for those of you who may be new to bass fishing, um, you might can gain a little bit of insight into how to use your soft plastics, whether you make your own or you buy them at the store. So this is just a simple Texas rig. Um, I actually, it's a lot of the times I put a little glass bead on there, which is really common in Carolina rigs. It just, it makes a little bit of noise. Um, you know, just something else to try to attract them over. But uh, you don't certain, you, you certainly don't have to have a glass bead. But this is just a little tungsten weight. Um, that looks about like a quarter ounce, uh, maybe a quarter ounce. I don't know, it's, it's, it's pretty small, maybe smaller than that. But, um, I like, so if, I, if I'm just going to throw a Texas rig worm, I like about a four or five aught offset shank wide gap worm hook, which is exactly what that is. So for just a Texas rig, and you'll find a lot of baits are really Texas rigged at the end of the day. Um, even on a Carolina rig, you still Texas rig the worm. Uh, it's just the weight is pegged up above. So basically just going to go in the nose here. And we're going to go exactly to where the hook starts to bend. And then we're going to push that, uh, we're, excuse me, we're going to push the hook point out. And then we're going to feed the rest of the shank of the hook down through the nose, past that little uh, gap there. And we're going to sink it all the way in and kind of rotate it. And we're going to pull it up to where that little offset shank now sticks out. And you'll see the hook kind of naturally flows up even with that side of the worm. And that's what you want. You want it to sit like that. So in order to achieve that, you need to push it up a little bit and you'll get the hang of this over time. I'm still not perfect at it. Push the hook point out, kind of push the worm up a little bit and then skin hook the nose, or excuse me, skin hook the, uh, the tip of the hook. And there you have a perfectly straight Texas rig. And uh, yeah, so that's what the red bug uh, ribbon tail worm looks like on a Texas rig and uh, that is ready for action guys Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode uh, Again, some popular colors are really simple and some simple simple colors are the best colors um, You can already see now that I've added some oil. I don't know if that's coming through. You can see the red bleed um, so Fortunately a lot of reds bleed, but that's just how it goes and uh, I've come to expect it. It is what it is um, I don't have a problem with it, you know, as long as I know not to mix these with other baits, uh, I'm generally good to go. Um, it's it's, it's kind of like not mixing 3X plastic, you know, the really stretchy stuff. stuff. Uh, Strike King came out with it years ago, like when I was in high school, the Zulu, or the Zulu, the Zulu was their fluke, but it was that 3X plastic. If you put that with regular plastisol, it's just going to melt and become a big mess. Um, 
So you kind of have to treat red baits like that. Uh, maybe not all red baits, but in my experience, most red baits. But that is Red Bug. Really, really simple color. Definitely try it at home. Um, it's, it was one of the first colors I ever made. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of, it, it's an easy one to, to learn really quick. You'll pick it up immediately. And, um, you know, you can probably have some fun, add some different flake to it. You know, maybe do some split tails and, uh, you know, really kind of make it your own. But um, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Shoot me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about Redbug. Um, and please, more ideas for more videos. Uh, new colors, um, popular colors, custom colors. Um, I'm going to try to go fishing. Just It's a little difficult with a newborn. Um, I'm hopefully going to go this weekend. But, uh, you know, life, life doesn't wait sometimes. And, uh, you know, having... Having a week old uh, child in the house, um, he has to come first, which not a problem there. But hopefully we'll go fishing soon and we can bring you some more content. Um, but, you know, let me know if you want to see some other types of content. You know, I can do tackle reviews. I can do, um, you know, I, I can do rigging. We, we, can, we can show people how to rig baits. Um, I can try to incorporate some of my other fishing buddies, get them on camera and let them talk about how they like to rig certain baits and and how they like to use them so you know there's a lot of other things we can do um you know plastics are one of my favorite things always but um anyway i'm just rambling at this point but um yeah, got us got us a big uh got us a big dc9 coming overhead or airplane or whatever that is but um anyway again that's gonna wrap it up thank you so much for watching this episode of the world's worst fishing and we'll catch you next time